Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most interesting mini PCs we've ever had on the channel. Now, you know I do a lot of reviews on these tiny PCs, but this is one I knew I had to get my hands on a bit early, and this is known as the Kados Mind. And you might be familiar with Kados for making these really small form factor ARM-based mini PCs, like their latest model, the Kados Edge. This is one of my favorite ARM-powered single board computers right now, and it really puts out some great performance, but it really has nothing on the new Kados Mind, because this is actually using a 12-core, 16-thread x86 CPU, and like I mentioned, I'm referring to this as kind of a modular mini PC because they will be selling several different accessories that you can attach the main mine module to, like their I.O. add-on, which just happens to add a ton of I.O. to this mini PC. But if you take a look over at their main website, you'll see that they're going to be offering a few different accessories for this, or add-ons. I've got the I.O. expansion dock right now. That's the only one I could get my hands on. But they also have kind of a laptop module and a discrete graphics module, which contains an RTX 4060M. So needless to say, yeah, we'll be able to really expand this mini PC, but you can use it just like it is right out of the box, and the performance here is way better than I thought it would be. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this out, and I'll show you just how tiny this mini PC is. Now I do plan on making a couple different videos, because I've actually got some really cool plans for this thing. But as you can see here, I mean, it fits right in the palm of your hand, and this is definitely the thinnest 12 core 16 thread mini PC that I've seen yet. And remember, this is not an ARM chip, this is x86. And I personally love the design. And just to give you an idea of how small this thing really is, I wanted to compare it to some regular items I had laying around, like my Pixel 7 Pro Android powered smartphone. We've got a Raspberry Pi 4, a mouse I use on a daily basis, just a regular wireless Logitech mouse, and a PS Vita. I mean, this thing isn't much bigger than any of these items here, but it's putting out a ton of performance. Taking a look at the overall layout, again, very minimalistic, not much going on up front here, but we do have our power button slash reset button and an LED indicator to let us know what's going on with the unit. Around each side, we can physically see the internal heat sink, and it's going to pull in air from this side, push it out of the other. It does have a blower style fan inside of it, and I will be doing a full teardown video coming up soon. I didn't want to destroy it before we got in here, but there's some really interesting stuff internally also. And of course, around back, we've got two USB Type-C ports. Both of these do support display out and PD charging. We've got a full-size HDMI 2.0 port around back, and two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Now, it doesn't look like we've got quite a bunch of I.O. on the main unit itself, but if we take a look at the bottom, We've actually got the new MindLink port. This is proprietary to Kados, and I kind of wish they would have added at least USB 4 around back so we could connect an eGPU, but they kind of left it out for their MindLink port. This is how we're going to connect to all of their accessories. And speaking of accessories, I did want to give you a quick look at their I.O. dog. As you can see, it's got the MindLink port right there. It's got a volume wheel, and around back, we've got Ethernet two full-size HDMI ports, two more full-size USB ports, and USB Type-C. So in order to get this connected, it's actually really simple. You're just going to set the MIND module directly on top. It's going to line everything up. It's got some pretty strong magnets here to kind of keep it down. But as soon as we have this connected, we've got a ton of I.O., and their other accessories are going to work in the exact same way. Taking a look at what comes in the box with the main MIND module, basically we get the unit itself, USB Type-C charging cable, and a 65-watt PD charger. We're going to power this up over USB Type-C, and I've actually been using a USB Type-C charger that I already have. It's up to 65 watts, but this also works in single cable operation mode. So if you've got a display that supports PD charging out and video in over USB Type-C, you just need that single cable to get up and running. And when it comes to the overall specs, we've got a Raptor Lake Intel Core i7-1360P, 12 cores, 16 threads, 4 performance cores up to 5 GHz, and 8 efficiency cores up to 3.7 GHz. A built-in Intel Iris Xe iGPU with 96 execution units that'll run at 1500 MHz, 32 GB of LP DDR5 RAM at 5200 MHz, so this is non-user upgradable, it is soldered to the board. It supports two M.2 SSDs, one NVMe PCIe 4.0 2230 SSD, and one PCIe 3.0 2230 SSD. So we can easily upgrade the storage. We've also got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. And a really interesting feature here is we've got a smaller built-in lithium battery. It's only 5.55 watt hours, 
but it's known as a standby battery and we can do up to five hours of sleep with this. So if you're on the go, you need to put it to sleep, you can unplug it all together, place it in your bag, head to the next spot, and you can resume exactly where you were. Now, I wanted to show you single cable operation mode because I think this is really important for these mini PCs. This monitor does support 100 watt PD charging out, so I've got plenty of power for the mine. So basically, I just need one cable here. It's going to send power from the monitor, and in turn, we're going to send video signal back to the display. This is really great for these mini PCs, especially if you're working with like a battery powered portable monitor. We've got Windows 11 Home installed here, and real quick, just give you a look, we are really running at 1360p. We've also got 32 gigabytes of RAM running at 5200 megahertz, and that 96 execution unit Iris Xe iGPU. Now, in the past, we haven't seen great performance out of Iris Xe, but with all of the new driver updates that Intel has been putting out, kind of tailored towards their new ARC cards, a lot of that does trickle down to these iGPUs, and we've actually got a really nice boost in iGPU performance on these devices. Using this little machine as an everyday desktop would work out just fine. We do have more than enough power. And by the way, base TDP here is actually at 32 watts right out of the box. But once you put a load on the CPU and iGPU at the same time, I've actually seen that jump up to around 47 watts. And we haven't hit thermal throttle with this unit yet. We will be running some benchmarks and testing out some PC games on this thing. I wanted to show you the performance it's putting out. But uh, web browsing, really snappy. Moving over to some 4K video playback. I've always had really good luck with these Intel chips in 4K video playback. And right now we've got a 4K 60fps HDR video, kind of one of my go-to tests. On the initial load in, we had two drop frames and that's kind of normal for most PCs to do. Stats for nerds up in the top left hand corner. But I mean, basically ever since Intel 8th gen, I've never really had any trouble with 4K video playback from these Intel chips, be it i3 up to i7. Now the Celerons can definitely struggle, especially the older ones. But we're working with a 13th gen i7, so 4K is good to go. And by the way, you can do 8K 30 over USB Type-C around back here, or 4K 60, I think it'll do 5.7K at 72 Hertz. So you've got a wide range that you can go. 4K, in my opinion, is more than enough. Usually, I even run my main gaming PC at 1080. I know it might be a bit hard to see, but I wanted to show you this TDP. 32 watts there just on the CPU, and if I was to put a load on the GPU, we could get a boost up to around 47 for a short period of time. But it does have more than enough to get some higher clocks on the CPU and GPU at the same time. The next thing I wanted to show you were some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And the first one here is Geekbench 6, single core looking great at 2,469, multi 10,507. Remember, the Intel i7-1360P is actually rated at up to 64 watts, but we're not running it at that maximum in this thing. So there is more that we can get out of this. I haven't messed around with the TDP at all. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. We have Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark. Total score, 13,544. And finally, Night Raid at 19,180. With these synthetic benchmarks, the Iris Xe is definitely coming in way behind uh, RDNA 2 iGPUs and especially RDNA 3. But with the newer ARC driver updates that Intel has been pushing out every single week, when it comes to real world gaming performance, I've definitely seen a nice boost with these iGPUs. So that's the next thing we're going to be taking a look at. And first up, we've got OG Skyrim. Definitely wanted to test this out. We're at 1080p medium settings. And uh, we're running at 60. You can see up in the top left hand corner, we've got Afterburner running. And with an older game like this, we're right on the edge of around 30 watts. You can see that the iGPU actually doesn't even need to go up to 1500 megahertz. And I probably should have went into this at high settings, but I think medium's fine at 1080p, especially on a smaller PC like this. Skyrim is still one of my favorite games, so you know I had to test it. But let's take it up just a little bit more. Here's CS, here's CSGO, 1080p, medium settings, and uh, throughout I actually had a pretty good experience, but sometimes you get that stutter. Now it never went under 60. To me, it feels like shader caching, and you know, I've done a lot of testing with these iGPUs. I think that's exactly what's going on here. But you know, as soon as I got over kind of those little stutters that I had at the beginning, but by the end, we had an average of 98 FPS, and you'll even see it jump up to around 170 in some cases. 
So the last two games we took a look at were definitely older, and we were actually able to run those at 1080p. When it comes to something like Street Fighter VI, I did have to drop this down to low settings 720, but I was still really impressed that it was able to run this game at 60fps. I know 720p isn't the ideal resolution for a lot of people out there, but I think this game still looks great like that, and even at low settings, it's more than playable. And even something like Injustice 2 can run at low settings 720p, 60fps. Moving over to Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, this is one that really struggles on iGPUs, even the more powerful iGPUs. I wasn't expecting to get much out of this, but it did better than I thought. We're not going to be able to run this at 60 FPS on the Iris XE graphics here, but we could lock this at 40 to 45 and have a pretty good time with it. 720p low. And the final game I wanted to test for this video was Cyberpunk 2077, where it's 720p low. And when I say low settings, I'm not talking about the preset. I'm talking about going through and manually turning everything down to the lowest it can go. We got an average of 52 FPS with this. And going into this, I was under the impression we'd be right there on the edge of 30. But to my surprise, with these newly updated iGPU drivers from Intel, we've actually got much better performance than we did in the past. And you gotta keep in mind, everything we've taken a look at running in this video is on the iGPU. Remember, Kados is also gonna be offering their graphics dock with that RTX 4060, which is definitely gonna up performance. On the CPU side of things, this i7-1360P actually has a lot of performance for these AAA games. We're just being held back by that iGPU right now. So far, I think Kados has done a great job with the new mind. I cannot wait to get my hands on some more accessories, but there's a few things that I do want to test with this in a later video. Obviously, I'd love to do a teardown here, but again, I didn't want to destroy the unit before I was able to at least make a couple more videos. So keep an eye on the channel because I will tear this thing down. I'm actually interested to see how they have those two M.2 SSDs in here. But there's one thing that I think they should have added right from the start, and that's USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 directly on the main module here. That way we could use a Thunderbolt dock to connect an eGPU, but I kind of see what they were going for. They wanted to save that bandwidth for the Kados link on the bottom. Plus, they can also sell their graphics dock if it's set up like this. I mean, you have to plug it directly into their new graphics dock, which is going to have an RTX 4060M. And I'm really interested in testing one out, so I'm going to see if I can get my hands on one. But so far, I think this is an awesome little modular mini PC, pocket workstation, whatever you want to call it. And just with the main module here, it's actually putting out some really great performance. As you saw with gaming, Intel has kind of upped the graphics drivers on these XE graphics. Uh, they definitely have been working really hard on their GPU drivers, especially for their Arc series. But a lot of this stuff does transfer down to the iGPUs. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the new Kados Mine. I will have a couple more videos coming and the Indiegogo will be launching very soon. So what I'm going to do is leave some links in the description to Kados' official website. All new information will be posted over there. And as soon as we get some more information on that graphics doc, I will do a community post because that's one thing I'm super interested in. Not sure how it's going to be connected. You know, I mean, if we were doing Thunderbolt, I could see it working out. But we could be using like a PCIe 4.0 lane here and we can see some really great performance. And one last thing here, I'd love to know your thoughts about the new Kados mine. What kind of project would you use this for? Are you even interested in it? Are you going to wait for something else? Let us know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.